Hi, welcome to Rick Snyder's Washington, and a happy 87th birthday to Sonny Jurgensen, who I fortunately can call a friend. And one of the great things about covering the Washington football team and the Redskins of the past is I grew up in Washington, so this was one of my teams. I was more of a baseball kid, but they left town. So I watched Sonny Jurgensen a lot. I watched his 70s teams a lot. And when people say to me, man, you must really love covering the team because they have favorite current players. It's, it's, you know, it's a job to me today, but my favorite players played in the 70s, and I do get to meet some of them now and then. And it's cool. It's cool to see these guys. I got to meet Billy Kilmer well. Uh, really great guy. Pat Fisher. You know, a lot of these guys. But Sonny, I got to meet a lot. And I guess I can tell a few stories about it now. Uh, in 1995, the team went to Frostburg for five years for training camp. I mean, we got to come home, but you know. And I got to hang out with Sonny a lot. And Sonny and I actually ate lunch together most days for six weeks uh, for that training camp every summer. And some of it, I found I became Sonny's protector because fans back then could also eat in the lunchroom area, different away from the players, but not us. And people, you know, they'd come over wanting an autograph from Sonny. They'd be so excited to meet him. And I, I quickly learned Sonny's thing was he never minded signing for people. But he wanted to eat lunch first because he was tired. He'd been to practice just like we had. You're dehydrated. You know, you need to recover. And by then he was, I guess, 60 or so. Gee, that's what I am now. Oh, man. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I kind of learned to, to fend people off for Sonny and say, Sonny will sign later. Like I was his agent or something. Uh, but that's just how it worked. And I was glad to do it. Uh, and a lot, Sonny didn't mind signing autographs. What got him really mad, though, was he was telling me a story. One time he signs a jersey. And then he goes to lunch, and there's a sports store across the street as he's going. He looks in the window, and there is that Sonny Jurgensen jersey for sale. And that's when he got mad that people were doing that. You know, a lot of people would say, oh, don't, don't make it out to anybody. Just sign your name because they want to sell it. And Sonny got tired of watching people make money like that. That was the only time that, that really annoyed him. Um, before Dan Snyder took Sonny and Sam on the plane to games, they used to fly commercial with us. And quite often, um, you'd watch over them as we were going. And, you know, there are many times, uh, you yeah, know, I said, hey, Sonny, one time he didn't have, they had Sonny, Sam, and Frank. Frank would drive, Sonny and Sam would ride. But for some reason, uh, you know, Frank wasn't around. And so Sonny got a ride from me over to the team hotel. And the media actually used to stay in the team hotel uh, for a while until Dan Snyder came along. So, I mean, at one time, the rental car is way out there. And Sonny says to me, I'll wait here for you. <laughs> and when we got to the hotel, I had to carry his bags in. And, and I was all for it. You know, this is my childhood guy watching him play. Was Sonny the best quarterback ever for the Redskins? Well, Sonny will tell you flat out that he says it's Sammy Ball. I didn't get to see Sammy play. I'm not that old. But, okay, if that's what Sonny says, then, you know, I'm going with that. But he's number two. And if we were to say a modern era, you know, post-World War II or something, uh, you know, it would be Sonny. Easily. I mean, Sonny could just throw the ball like magic. Uh, you know, the team was in Osaka, Japan. Well, this was 2002. Uh, and Sonny is on the field. In the pregame, he used to throw the ball around. And Sonny could flip it behind his back to people, even at this age. You know, I mean, this is uh, almost 20 years ago, so he would have been in his mid-60s. He's still throwing a ball. And, you know, Dan Snyder used to have all his little corporate buddies come, and they'd be down the sidelines, and they'd want Sonny to throw him a ball so they could say they caught a pass from Sonny. Sonny didn't mind. He would have these guys run into their tongues, fell out. They would, he, he put the ball just on their fingertips. So they were almost there, but not quite. And that's because Sonny's playing with them. He didn't really like these guys that much, I guess. So he would just torment the hell out of them until he was done having fun. And then he'd just throw one to them. But he, he would do stuff like that. Connie, you know, to listen to Sonny, you would learn a lot about football. Oh, man, so he sees so much. And I would say this about a lot of old ex-players. You know, you listen to Brian Mitchell. Uh, talk about things. It's amazing what they see because they've studied these things so much. It was their job. I, mean, I feel like I know nothing when I'm listening to these guys. You know, Brian will point out things. I'm like, what? Well, oh, man, you. you know, and Sonny was like that. Sonny could tell you so much about what was right or wrong with the quarterback, and there certainly was enough through. One day, he finally says, Dan Turk and uh, and Scott Blanton, the kicker, used to throw the balls in practice. We were down in Miami. They're throwing during drills, and Sonny looks and goes. 
It's a damn shame when the punter and a kicker are the best passers on this team. That's back when Heath and Gus were around, I think. You know, so Sonny, you know, he would make quips like that. Sonny would torment Jim Zorn after games with his, you know, the decision-making. Sonny would do the post-game interview for him for the radio. Sonny would just dissect Zorn, and Zorn would get so mad because he couldn't defend himself. You know, Norby still, I mean, Norv Turner also would get mad at Sonny at times because Sonny was pretty good at it. And, you know, Norv would start to haltingly talk about, uh, eh, and Sonny would just go at him. So a lot of coaches didn't like Sonny just for that reason. People always ask me, why didn't Sonny become a quarterback's coach? Sonny didn't need to. I mean, you know, assistant coaches in the NFL do nothing but work like dogs. These poor guys work 100 hours a week. If you, you know, it's fun for about five minutes and then you get tired of it. You know, Sonny didn't have to do that. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He was fine financially like that, you know. When I watched uh, Sonny, I remember him uh, more in his later years. And, you know, he'd come in, Billy would screw it up, and Sonny would come in and win the game. It was pretty remarkable. Sam Huff used to always tell the joke when Sonny was around. Of, you know, it was, it was the only year Sonny was ever in shape was when Vince Lombardi came. You know, and Sonny would always kind of look at him like, hey, yeah, buddy. You know, he, he didn't like that. Yeah, you know, Sonny had a little bit of a gut from drinking beverages, I guess. But, you know, he he loved Lombardi. And, uh, they, you know, Sam and Sonny would talk about Lombardi like he was God. Uh, they respect him. Lombardi would often say if he'd had Sonny in Green Bay, he'd have won title every year. So, you know, there was a mutual thing there going on. Just, you know, when I talk about Sonny Jurgensen, you just go on and on with these stories. And I'll probably tell some more another day. But anyway, happy 87th Sonny. He's now in Naples, Florida, retired. Uh, living the good life. It's just get tired of traveling. And so he, he gave up the radio gig after all this time. But I know everybody still misses him. I hope to see him soon. And I hope to see you too soon. I'm Rick Snyder for Rick Snyder's Washington. I'll talk to you again soon.